there Aries welcome to your end of September 2021 general tarot update it's Raina here so I'm recording this on the uh, eve of the full moon in Pisces and Pisces is the sign before you and you're going to have a full moon in the 12th house so <laughs> I was gonna say good luck with that no it's actually a great time to say goodbye to um, bad habits, self-defeating patterns. Um, you know, it's always hard to utter those words because it makes it sound like you can flip a switch. And I realize it's a lot easier than it sounds. So um, I guess it's just becoming aware of them. And that's the first step of even knowing that you have these patterns, that you don't have to be a certain way just because that's how you've always been. And the 12th house is karma, so karmic release. How this happens, um, you know, I was going to say is anyone's guess, but um, perhaps it's just the idea of becoming aware, connecting the dots of what you see occurring in your in your actual reality and how it got there, you know, and being able to cut it off at the root. So it's kind of a psychological thing or a spiritual thing more than just like some of these full moon manifestations can be more on the physical level. This is more of an awareness than anything else, I would say. So let's see what comes up for you with these cards. This is uh, through the end of September. And of course, we have the equinox. So um, that's when the, the sun is going into your opposite sign of Libra. So that, that's a very, um, for everybody, that is a power period because the cardinal signs, the four seasons fall in the cardinal signs and they mark the equinoxes and the solstices. And... Um, the cardinal signs are all about action and doing. So we can see a lot more things kind of heat up at that time, at those times, you know, or we can expect it at the very least. The heart of the matter is the Ace of Pentacles. So some of you may be starting new jobs, contemplating um, getting a new job. And in this uh, depiction, we see the the portal, that opening, which is, you know, really representing aces or new beginnings. And um, the, the whole point is uh, that symbolically, it's not just about a new job. You know, whenever you have something that's new, whether it's a new relationship, a new job, it's about something much more than that. It's a new phase of your life. It's maybe, you know, new experiences, new people that come into your reality. And that serves as expansion in your life. And um, you can have whole new adventures, you know, and for, for Aries, that's especially attractive. That's something that you really like, are the beginnings of things. Um, this, this actually could also be a relationship if it is a new relationship, either one that you have met that person and you're currently seeing him or her, or that you will meet this person in the next two weeks, whatever that, that scenario is, this might be a keeper because the pentacles relate to earth energy, which is stable. You know, fire, Aries is a fire sign. I'm a Sagittarius fire, Leo's fire. Fire is considered unstable from the perspective of, you know, what the element represents, which is very expansive, but not necessarily just sticking in one place. You know what I mean? But that's, that doesn't mean that it's just, um, you know, that the person can't be anchored. It's just that the, uh, the element itself represents a lot of wild qualities, but some of those are very nice, like freedom and creativity and, and that that sort of thing. So, um, so it could be like meeting someone or cultivating a relationship with someone 
who has a stabilizing effect in your life or that you can see a future with. And um, maybe this, this person is a literal earth sign. So that would be either Taurus, Capricorn. I, I would place my bets with Capricorn because it's another cardinal sign like Aries or um, Virgo. And um, the other thing that this can be is receiving a windfall of money. Now, how that comes, I don't know. <laughs> don't don't uh, come back to me and said, you said I was going to get this money. In the past position is the hangman. And this is kind of a waiting period. So maybe you've been waiting to hear about a job and you do. Also, one thing to note in this last half of September astrologically is that we do have a Mercury retrograde. Now, as I record this, it has not happened yet, but it is in the um, shadow period, the official date that Mercury goes retrograde. I think it's on the 27th of September. So I'm recording this on the 20th, I mean on the 19th. So it is um, eight days away. Um, but definitely in the shadow period. Now, um, sometimes you hear back from people that you dealt with before during Mercury retrograde. So it's possible that you might hear back from a place that you applied to in the past. And now they say, Hey, I, are, are you still interested in this? I, I just, I still shake my head, uh, when I, before I started my business to do this, I was applying so many places, so many places until I hired myself because it just wasn't manifesting, you know, trying to get a job, um, asking for a job from the outside world. And I remember after I started doing this, I can't remember how long after, uh, you know, I started getting clients and stuff. All of a sudden they said, Hey, are you still interested in some, type of job, you know, and I'm like, you got to be kidding me. There were so, there was so long when I was just looking for something. And that's how it works sometimes is that, um, it's like a woman getting pregnant after she adopts, <laughs> you know, you let go of resistance and you get what you want, but you may have already moved on. And that's why you let go of resistance. You know, it's not easy for, uh, the hangman to show up for Aries because the typical Aries person, unless they have a lot of Taurus inner planets, they tend to be very impatient. And so you might have been chomping at the bit and feeling like your hands were tied and now you have what you want. And so that can be a very good thing, obviously. So the higher message, the spiritual message in all this is the chariot. And the chariot is about um, single pointed attention on something leading to success. Okay. So in other words, um, and in this particular, I, I, I use a different deck usually, and it'll show two horses. They're black and white in this, they show kind of similar things with the black and white, but there's stripes there. So it might confuse people, but it's like duality is uh, represented by black and white. And sometimes we take sides in a certain issue because we, you know, if you want a new job, um, you may feel like I have to have this or else when in fact it's not, you know, fear dictating your life isn't the best way to manifest something because it's coming from a negative place. So having your eyes on the prize of what you want, but not allowing yourself to say, I, you know, it has to be this or X is going to happen is... A much better way. Aries people tend to be very positive in their thoughts. So it may not be um, just a, about something like that, but more about general stuff that's going on around you that makes it hard to, to, to be one point and to concentrate because you're dealing with this and you're dealing with that. And, um, you know, it's funny because I'm actually thinking of an Aries person that I knew and they were so um, ambitious 
And I always marveled at how they were able to just kind of keep their eyes on the prize. And it takes a lot of, um, it takes a lot of, of, um, ability to focus and not get distracted, you know? And that's, to me, what the chariot represents is that the victory that comes from not giving in to those distractions or the success, you know. What crosses you is the two of wands. I would say in general that this is something to do with maybe being at a crossroads. And wands can relate to career. I'm just looking at this very closely because he's holding the world in his hand and sometimes this can mean that the person is even thinking of relocating um but there's there's uh some reason why it is something that you're not quite sure if you should do do or not do or what have you and you're kind of like um torn and so so whether it's like two different careers and usually my feeling is, in a lot of cases, is that there's something that you really want to do and there's something that is very lucrative. And your, your you know, wands are very creative and freedom loving. And that's another thing is that if you don't have freedom in your life, the average Aries person isn't going to be a happy camper. So please keep that in mind. And if this is about anything related to relocation, um, think about why you would even stay. Because again, you know, Aries is an adventurous sign, but there are going to be different types of Aries for sure. If you're, if your moon sign, your moon sign and your rising sign can be anything. So if they are, you know, cancer or something very kind of attached to the home or Taurus or you have a lot of Taurus inner planets. You may be attached to to where you come from, your homeland, and it's very hard to kind of spread your wings. Um, or there might be some people that you're attached to that you would have to leave. So think about that because this is all about expansion in your life. And if you have these opportunities and you're kind of like shying away from them, from them, make sure that it's for a good reason and not because other people are not cooperating or uh, encouraging you. What is coming in is represented by the Queen of Pentacles. This is a very um, feminine energy, uh, the home, the, you know, co connecting with the earth, gardening, anything that speaks to your domestic life from an exalted point of view. So in other words, like, um, it's, it's, it's really about being on the throne in your home. So if you are somebody who has a job, um, maybe you're even starting a new business, anything along those lines, you may choose to do it from the home because this is where you feel powerful at the moment. And usually this is atypical for Aries, to tell you the truth, because you are very much somebody who is extroverted and you like being in the world and, you know, experiencing new things, but, and, and you're not necessarily that much of a homebody. But there may be circumstances. And yeah, you know, come to think of it, that could be the challenge uh, with the two of wands. It might be that you can't do that. You want to do that. It's not necessarily that you can't decide, but that you don't, you, that you want to relocate and you can't. So what you may decide to do is make the best out of the situation that you have and create... Um, I was going to say like a kingdom out of your home, a, a place where you feel that you are, you know, or just appreciate it. Maybe you have this beautiful environment, but you just 
work so much or you are out and about so much that you really have not had a chance to um, really just enjoy what you have, have worked so hard for. And this is going to help you to, to be able to like um, advance because when things free up for you, then you will be able to, to bring your creation to more people because that's really what the wands represent is creativity, but also expansion. And that could mean expanding a market, um, territory, and that sort of thing. And the outcome is the seven of wands. The number seven is a turning point. And again, we have this wands energy that is really connected to all the fire signs, which involve freedom, creative self-expression. But the number seven, in addition to being about, you know, this, this uh, time of like, you know, changing one's path, perhaps, is also very inward. So all of the things that you think you have to bring to others, maybe you're um, nourishing yourself with these things. I'm going to pick an additional card just from the stick. I'm just going to cut it and just see a clarification card. Yes, so here we have the Queen of Cups. So this is a card of psychic um, and creative a psychic and creative person. Also, this is a, a card connected to the mother and to cancer in particular. So, um, yes, yeah, a domestic, you know, that's the, the home as well. So I think that also with the seven of wands, this is a card of standing your ground. So if you, um, have, um, if you have some kind of a situation, uh, like a professional situation, maybe this is a new job and they, yeah, and you thought you were going to be transferred to someplace, possibly even overseas, but, you know, away from your home environment and that is up in the air or just whatever, you may want to work from home and fight for your right to do that because, um, you're dealing with, maybe you're dealing with some kind of pushback in that, in that area for some reason. And, um, I feel like Aries people, you know, because you do have Chiron transiting your sign are first of all, becoming more sensitive during this time. And this is not something that just started happening. Um, Chiron has been in Aries for a while now. But this can also influence the type of work that you're doing. So the Queen of Cups, it might be more intuitive work, healing work, creative work. Um, we see these pentacles, the Queen of Pentacles, Ace of Pentacles, kind of influencing from a more material point of view. And that might be what the tug of war is all about. And... Um, there's strong cancer energy here. The chariot connects to cancer too, now that I think about it. So I don't know, you know, if that means anything to anybody, but I just want to mention that. So that's what I have for you, Aries. I hope that uh, this resonated in some way. If you would like a personal reading, especially when I look at your natal chart, that's to me, that is to me where it's all at. And um, I do double readings because they're more substantial, uh, called deep dive readings. And they uh, are at a discounted price when you get that package. And um, there's one with the tarot reading called the whole enchilada. So you can check out all of my readings at rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.